Cool. Yeah, awesome. Uh, we're going to get kicked off probably in about like 55 minutes from Crowdcast, so uh, probably a good time to get started. Um, I do have like a lecture portion here that we'll <laughs> we're going to try to get through as quickly as possible in about 20 minutes. Right after that, we're gonna. Uh, some of you guys submitted um, your profiles with your sign up form and your welcome email that um, we're gonna take a, a look at and, and critique and, and, and give some feedback on. Uh, and then after that, we'll, if we have some time, uh, we do have a couple questions too. And of course, put some questions in the chat. So, yeah, uh, let's get started. This is the TED Talk portion of the uh, evening uh, Creator Email Marketing Building Your Optimized Email Sign Up Flow. Um, yeah, let's get started on these slides. Let's get after it. Uh, I'm Brian at Beacons. Um, Beacons is an all-in-one tool set for creators, as probably a lot of you guys know. Uh, we're probably most well known for like our LinkedIn bio slash microsite builder. Um, but we are building out uh, a whole lot of tools in the back end for creators, uh, one of which we're going to dive into, which is email, which is the email marketing app. Uh, and, and yeah, again, I'm Brian. Uh, I work at Beacons. Um, formerly, I've done a lot of direct to fan marketing for all types of creators in the past, um, et cetera, et cetera. Cool. So uh, for the TED Talk portion, there's three sections. Um, why uh, number one? Why welcome emails are so important? How to set up a good number two? How to set up a good sign up form, which is um, part and parcel of of a good welcome email sign up flow. And then lastly, how to set up a good welcome email. Cool. So part one, the importance of welcome emails. Uh, the most important thing about welcome emails is that it's probably going to be the most open, most engaged, most clicked, most reply email that you ever send um, if you're starting a newsletter. Um, and these are stats here for a delayed welcome, meaning like it's not real time, it's batch sent. Uh, and you can already tell that um, it's uh, it gets a lot, a lot more opens, uh, like three times more opens than your average promotional email. And I think like four to five times more clicks than your average uh, promotional email. Um, but then make it a real time welcome email, and all the numbers just go basically off the charts. Um, yeah, so if you have a real time welcome email, the uh, open rate is almost 90%, which is crazy, um, and 30% more even than, uh, than a, a, than a uh, batch welcome email. Um, so that one little thing will um, like basically super boost your opens. Um, and then, yeah, as, as you could tell with the click rates, um, more than 10 times more click rate than your average promotional email. Um, so all important things. Um, and especially if you're selling something, if you have a product that you're selling, uh, the advantages are even greater. Um, for every 100 emails, this is some study done on like, I think Experian marketing service or something like that. Um, you can expect $583 in average transaction. This is again, it depends on your product. Uh, but the mo main point is it's like it's uh, more than 10 times more than a delayed welcome email. And I don't know what, I, I can't do the math, but like 30 to 40 times more than your average promotional email in terms of like volume of sales. So, I mean, main point being if like, if you never send out a, a promotional email ever, if you start a newsletter and you only send out a real time welcome email, it's probably worth it just to do that. <laughs> Um, cool. So why welcome email engagement matters, why all the things that we just talked about matters. Uh, there's a thing called a sender reputation score, which we, we probably shouldn't get too into, but uh, it's important. And um, one of the reasons why is um, um, uh, for, for deliverability on two levels. One of them is on your level, one on one with each individual subscriber. Um, a welcome email, if you get them to open it. Uh, which again, like if you're sending it real time, you're a lot more likely to get them to open it. Um, you're likely to probably get better inbox placement um, within that subscriber's inbox, right? Like uh, if in spam, come get that spam email, or if it's in promotional email, if you get them to reply. Either way, uh, some uh, that engagement right in the beginning uh, probably improve, improves your placement in your subscriber's inbox or, or mailbox. Um, so that kind of like sets the um, um, that sets your relationship on a good foot, right? Like the next time you send an email uh, with that individual subscriber, you know, that person's more likely to open it. So that's on an individual level, but um, on a collective level, um, inboxes like Gmail, which is the biggest one out there, they're always kind of, you know, uh, monitoring you, monitoring you as, a, as a sender, almost like a credit score. That's what your sender reputation score is. So if you can get um, um, 
if you can get good engagement and replies and opens right off the bat from a welcome email, that's basically improving your like credit score with Gmail. And so the next time that you send that 101st email or, or, or welcome email, uh, you're less likely to be in spam. Because realistically, if you're sending um, an email, a marketing email for the first time from your uh, sender email, you're probably going to end up in the spam inbox. If you don't send a welcome email and you collect, let's say, 100 emails um, um, to Gmail and you send off your first blast, 100 emails from some unknown email to Gmail, uh, you're almost certainly going to end up in spam. So for all those reasons, you know, for all these backend like deliverability reasons, you want to get a real time email going. Lastly, there's like the psychological element. If uh, someone signs up to your inbox, they expect to get a welcome email. And if you don't send it, um, obviously they're not engaging with you right off the bat when their intention is the highest. Um, whereas if you do, then you know at least they go through the process of opening your email, getting to know you seeing you in that context, um, in that inbox context, you're then more likely to open your next email. So yeah, all those things kind of boil down to what I think is the most important reason you should have a welcome email, a real-time welcome email, because subscribers who get a welcome email show 33% more long-term engagement, which is crazy because um, there's all these things you could do to get good engagement, good, get good opens. That's going to take a lot of work right down the road. You, you should have good content and good offers and all that kind of stuff. Um, but this one little trick in the beginning will improve uh, your engagement by 33%. Like that's like, it's, it's, it's like necessary, right? Like you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot, start a newsletter and um, not do this one step that's going to have so much compounding um, benefits for you over time. Cool. So having said all that, now that we know the importance of it, uh, we can see on our back end that 88% conservatively of Beacon's creators who collect emails do not send a real-time welcome email. Um, and I think that's for two big reasons. One of them is uh, they didn't see all the slides that I just showed you guys. They don't know the importance of a welcome email. Um, and if you don't know the importance of a welcome email, then number two, you're not gonna go to the trouble of setting one up, which it, it could be you know, quite a task to set up a welcome email, especially if you're collecting emails on one spot, but you have your, uh, I don't know, your MailChimp, your ConvertKit, or your, your uh, email marketing platform on another spot. You wanna get the thing to communicate in real time. You gotta know how to use like Zapier or have some sort of technical know-how. Gotta pay for Zapier uh, or some other option. Um, it's actually pretty annoying. It's, it can be kind of, it can be expensive. Um, all those things, right? The, peop the place where the people where your fans are going to know more about you is not necessarily a, a MailChimp landing page, right? But having said all that, um, a message from our sponsor, Beacons. Beacons has free welcome emails, right? Beacons is already the place where you're sending your fans um, who want to learn more about you. That's where they're subscribing to you. That's where a lot of people obviously have their email signup blocks. Those, that's the place where a lot of creators don't send welcome emails, I guess, off to MailChimp. But now that we have free uh, welcome emails and an email uh, marketing app, um, just like uh, uh, Gordon Ramsay says here, you have no excuses, you donkey. So if you have no excuses. Let's get into how to make a good flow. Part two, the sign-up form. A, wel a good welcome email starts with a good sign-up form. Uh, they work hand-in-hand -hand, um, to get all the good benefits for you as a creator. So... Uh, um, a bad sign-up form, that's, it's, it's on the left, and some examples of good sign-up forms on the right. So why is the left one bad? Um, by the way, this is actually our default sign-up form. So if you make no changes to your sign-up form, this is what it looks like. Uh, and that's bad because uh, you got literally generic default copy, right? Um, has no personality. Uh, they can't, people can probably smell that's not coming from you. Uh, no reasons to join, no incentives. And yeah, no personality, right? Like it's pretty easy to tell um, this that that uh, um, this is probably not going to convert your best fans. Um, and actually, a lot of people leave it like this. So uh, I I highly encourage you guys to um, make something more like this. Um, these are two random examples. There's a lot of good examples out there. Um, the one on top has a specific incentive. Um, person who's good at Excel. Uh, the one on the bottom is a musician. So. Uh, a couple things. Um, they both have a lot of personality, humanity, clear subjects. There's a U, there's an I. Um, the incentives are specific and relevant. Incentives should both be an attractive and a filter. What that means is 
um, if you're going to have an incentive, um, um, uh, it should it should be one that only your best fans want, right? Like if you put out an incentive like to win a two hundred dollar gift certificate, you're probably gonna get a lot of people who don't care about you, who aren't gonna engage with you long term. That's probably a bad incentive. Uh, but if you put out, let's say, a guide on whatever you're a domain expert on, or in the case of of Clavita, who's the musicians down here, um, you know, even if it's not a downloadable specific incentive, if it's like for you know, news on secret shows and secret content, all that kind of stuff. Well, that's the kind of stuff like the best fans are going to want. Maybe even the casual fan doesn't even care. But um, uh, but again, um, you want your incentive to be kind of a filter for your best fans. People are going to engage the most. Uh, but yeah, um, the main thing here, though, is put your personality into it. Put your own copy into it. Um, um, people can, your, your best fans can tell, and they want to hear that stuff if, they, if they're going to sign up and give up their email. So that's all the stuff on the front end, but uh, the most important part about the sign-up form, and if there's like one thing that you guys take away about the sign-up form, um, is the uh, the message that the subscribers see after they submit. Uh, this one here on the right, this is the what it looks like in your Beacons account. If you go under your email sign-up block, you got to go right over here and, and edit your uh, success message. Uh, the reason why it's so important is um, um, you're going to have a real-time welcome email set up. There's probably a lot of them that, that is going to go to the spam or promotions inbox, and um, a lot of folks don't know to go check it. Uh, you, you should make it very clear that you sent the email, and you should make it very clear that they need to go and get it, right, uh, and check their spam inbox. Um, because if they don't do that, then they're probably never going to do it, and um, the, it's very likely that the next time you actually send an email, um, it's going to end up in the same spam or promotions inbox, right? So here's an example of some copy. I mean, you could say this in any, any different kind of way. Here's just one example, right? Thanks for subscribing. Important, go check your inbox, spam promotions, et cetera, for a welcome email from you, confirm your subscription, um, blah, 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 and get whatever, whatever reason you need to put in there. It doesn't even matter what the reason is. Just make sure you tell them to expect a welcome email and to go get, the, to go get it from their inbox for reasons X, Y, Z. Um, again, this is like the most critical step. So make sure you do that if you're going to set up a welcome email um, and a sign up form on Beacons or anywhere, really. Cool. Uh, so part three, the welcome email. Um, there's, uh, uh, in my opinion, five elements to the perfect welcome email. Um, number one is a personalized subject line. Uh, this is pretty important because um, that's the first thing people see before they open the email, right? Uh, and you want to make sure that they don't have to think that they know, oh, this is the email that that uh, that I told that creator told me to go get in my inbox, right? Um, um, yeah, you want to you have like the least amount of time between like landing in their inbox and, and clicking on your email. So make sure you have a personalized subject line. Uh, number two, first person voice. Don't use like whatever default copy your, um, your uh, email marketing service uses for welcome emails. Uh, make sure um, um, you're speaking in your own voice and that you're talking to um, um, your subscriber, at, at, like on almost like on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Number three, set expectations for content, deliver incentive, like what they can expect to get in the future in, in your newsletter. Even if you don't know what you're gonna do, even if you're just collecting emails and you're gonna plan on sending them content later, uh, be honest about that. Let them know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll probably be sending. I'm thinking about sending content on uh, X, Y, and Z, or maybe you know ABC format, whatever. Like you can, you can. You can actually be just honest about that and ask your your uh, subscriber, hey, what what's what's your opinion? What what would you find valuable, right? But point being, set some expectations um, for what they can receive after uh, the welcome email. Um, yeah, and then four, this is probably the most important thing I think, is um, solicit a reply, ask for a reply, you know, um, whether it's a question or whatever. Um, and the reason why is. Um, um, if you can get them to reply to a welcome email, then that's a signal to Gmail. Hey, this person is not a spammer. <laughs> um, they're an important person to uh, um, um, the subscriber, right? Uh, that automatic, just in that act alone, um, um, you'll get them to, um, uh, you'll, you'll get a better placement in, in your subscriber's inbox. Um, or failing that, you can just, the point is to get better inbox placement. There's Certain folks will say, hey, take me out of spam and promotion uh, and make me an important contact or whatever. 
Uh, you can do all those things. I personally think getting a reply, asking for a reply is like kind of the most organic way to, to get the same objective of good inbox placement. But whatever way you do it, make sure you do number four. <laughs> uh, number five, um, if, uh, you know, there's some people who think, um, um, you know, plain text uh, welcome emails are, are best because it's most authentic. And I, I kind of agree with that. Um, um, that's not a bad way to go. But if you're going to put an image, um, um, yeah, just make sure you put an image where people can kind of instantly recognize that it's you or your brand that's sending that email. Uh, a face in particular has particular advantages because everyone recognizes the face. It's just like a primordial thing. Um, and this gets, you know, a little bit into dark arts, but uh, there's like studies that show just a picture of a pair of eyes, right? Looking at you, even through a screen, uh, will cause the person seeing that um, pair of eyes to follow the instructions that are written on there, right? So if you're asking for a reply and you have your eyes and your face that they recognize looking at them through the email, um, they're a lot more likely to actually reply or, uh, um, you know, put your email in a better inbox, uh, which you do want to explicitly ask for. Cool. So those are the five elements. Let's take a look at what I think is the perfect welcome email. It's from a comedian named Ashley Gavin. Um, she's probably she probably is one of the best email marketers I've ever seen who from um, uh, from an entertainer. Um, um, and yeah, and 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 if and if you and if you know anyone in the comedy scene, they'll tell you like she like she sells out her shows, right? Even though she doesn't necessarily you know get a lot of love from all the gatekeepers in comedy. It's because she has like 100,000 good emails because um, um, she's really good at it. So anyways, um, um, let's do a little bit of a breakdown. As you can tell, there's her face looking at you, <laughs> um, expecting you to do all the things she asks. Uh, and then here's a copy on the right here. Uh, but yeah, let's take a closer look at the copy. Uh, so obviously, uh, she's got a very personalized subject line, very simple, uh, heart and emojis. If you go to your inbox, you see that subject line you know that's exactly what you're expecting um, from who you're expecting it from. First person voice, it's just littered throughout the content or throughout the body email. Uh, she literally starts with, hey, look, it's me, right? <laughs> like, uh, thank you so much for joining my email list. There's a you, there's a I, there's, um, um, it's a very one-on-one -on -one thing. It's, it's clearly her voice, it's clearly her writing it. Um, so she's got, you know, first person voice in spades and her own personality, obviously. Um, number three, set expectations for content or deliver your incentive. Um, here she says, if you just want ticket drop alerts, you'll never hear from me again until I'm in your town for the rest of you, blah, 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 blah. She's kind of setting these expectations of, of um, what uh, she's going to send to you and what she's not going to send to you, right? So uh, very clear there. Uh, and then number four, um, this is, I think, you know, the, the chef's kiss, solicit reply or inbox placement. Um, please keep in touch. And then in parentheses, you can email me directly. <laughs> um, and make sure you move this email from your spam or your promotions to your inbox. So she, she's just covering like all of her bases here. Uh, I, I like this line here too, the green one, seriously, whatever I can do to return the favor, including showing up your job and laughing and plotting for you, just let me know. Again, like um, it's just, I mean, she's a comedian, but like I think in general, like, um, um, you know, uh, you, it, it, it's, it's a great way to like approach email, right? It's like this sort of, authentic, um, um, almost like intimate channel, right? Um, um, yeah, because you, again, you do want those replies, you want those clicks, you want those, re you want the uh, engagement on those emails. Um, you know, uh, you don't necessarily need to use like this, like corporate transactional voice. I think that's probably less likely to get uh, engagement from um, specifically for like creator newsletters. Cool, so that's, um, Again, that's a TED part, the TED Talk part of the of the webinar. Um, we did have a few questions along the way. Are you? Is this yeah. a good moment to take those? Um, yeah, let's so do it. First well, let, let me first mention I'm, the reason why I'm putting my email here is we're about to get into like uh, breaking down um, um, uh, different sign up and welcome email setups. Uh, I got a lot of quests, so uh, I'm not going to get through all of them. But if you guys want. Um, like a personalized breakdown of your setup, feel free to email me or if you have any other questions. But yeah, what are some of the uh, questions? First question was about some of the stats you shared, uh, that first slide and throughout, where did those come from? And do you know the number of data points? 
Yeah, uh, good question. Um, they came from um, uh, Experian Marketing Services, uh, which did a, uh, they, they used to, I think they still do like an email marketing platform. Anyways, they, they, they took a look at a, like, I think a six or 700 creators, which isn't like the most amount of creators, I guess. Um, but, um, and I think we're probably going to run some numbers too, eventually on the, all this stuff. Um, but uh, it's directionally correct, right? Like um, if, if it's not precisely correct, uh, welcome emails. I mean, we just see in our system too, like, it just gets a lot more engagement and opens than um, um, than promotion emails by like whole digit multiples, right? Sometimes double digit multiples. So that's all you really need to know is like um, directionally, it's very correct. Yeah, I think. But yeah, Experian Marketing Services, by the way, if you look it up, like they kind of archived a lot of their stuff. But if you want to look at some, they have some good reports on welcome emails. Um, you can find them in the Wayback Machine. Um, if you guys want to look at that research, just email me. I can find it in the Wayback Machine for you. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah, we just got um, a new one, but we could just touch on quickly. Uh, we sort of answered this, the team in the chat already, but um, one problem I've encountered is that we can't upload good resolution images. The upload limit is low. This is in the Beacons tool specifically. Um, so are we working on an any kind of automatic compression feature or ability for images? Probably. <laughs> yeah, we did uh, sort of address on, that. You know. yeah, yeah, we did sort of on. address that in the chat, but I just wanted to surface okay. it anyway. Um, if I'm unsure about the weekly or even bi-weekly commitment to email marketing, is once a month still valuable? Oh yeah, I, I yeah, I mean, I, I, there's a, it really depends on you, you and your audience, but I would say, um, um, once a week's a lot for both sides, right? Even every every other week is a lot. Uh, um, again, it depends who you are and 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 your audience and and you know what you write about or whatever or what your niche is. Um, but if you can do once a month, that's amazing. Um, Ashley, Ashley Gavin, for example, she really only emails you when she's in town or she has like real big news, and, she, and I think she's one of the best email marketers out there. And she and like any given person like myself who lives in the Bay, I'm probably getting like four or five emails from her from a year, a year, right? Uh, that's not terrible. Um, yeah, it really depends on who you are, but yeah, if you can do once a month, that's, that's, that's more than enough, I think, to start at least. I'll chime in on that too, actually, and just say that um, sometimes it's like a write it once and then send it over and over again. So, you know, when you're writing that welcome email, you might change it or iterate on it, you know, throughout the times that you're sending it, but you're not rewriting it every single time you're emailing somebody. So you can create a set of emails that you send to people. Um, and then you don't necessarily have to have that time commitment to like write new ones all the time. Yeah, awesome. Um, we are gonna get to the qu more questions, so maybe we'll let them keep rolling in. Uh, yeah. But before we get into like the, um, the uh, uh, breakdown on, on some of our users' uh, welcome emails, I do want to mention, um, I feel like I got the sense from like the questions I got from the people who registered that they didn't really know where our email marketing tools are um, or all the things that we're talking about, right? So uh, I do want to uh, quickly show you guys where to find all these things. The sign up form um, is in your LinkedIn bio, right? The sign up form block, I think it's default, but if you go uh, to your LinkedIn bio, you'll see, um, your that you can add a email sign up block which i already added sorry about that <laughs> again i'm working outside because i don't have any power in my house um cool so i think they're gone but yeah if you if you if you uh um click into your uh, uh email sign up block you'll find all the things that you can change i actually have a bad example here because these are all default <laughs> But the part you want to get to, besides like putting all your um, you know, personal or your first person voice and all these things, is this part right here. This is the part where um, your subscribe the message your subscriber sees after submitting. Again, this part is like probably the most important part, and you want to put um, this line about checking their inbox right over here. Cool. So that's that. Uh, again, if you're going to tell them to um, check for a, a welcome email, you got to make one. 
Um, that's also kind of confusing, I think, maybe. Um, but yeah, if you uh, sign into your account, um, if you haven't already added the email marketing app, they're over here, this uh, at the top left, add apps. You can go here and you see all of our new apps. Um, um, and I already added the email marketing app, but um, you can add it here if you had it. Once you add it, you can go over here on the side and left sidebar. Um, if you haven't already created a welcome email, click new email. Workflow, work, right? We're gonna have all types of workflow emails in the future, but right now we really only do welcome emails and, and I think like store uh, replies. But if you wanna set up a welcome email, go ahead and click that and select the template. Um, give a warm welcome and yeah, go ahead and edit your welcome email with all the things we just talked about. Cool, so hopefully uh, you guys can find your way around here. Again, if you can't um, email me or anyone at Beacon. All right, so let's get into some of these welcome emails. Um, cool, so the first one is for Cal Barton. Is Cal, is Cal on the... Um, webinar here. Well, so Cal is a friend of the program. Check him out. And he's a, uh, a finance creator, credit cards, and whatnot. Um, cool. So right off the bat, um, I've actually talked to Cal about this before, and he's read the guide. But right off the bat, um, let's see, twelve free. Yeah, I mean, it's great. Um, I'd probably add a little bit of first-person voice, but otherwise, like, it's a very clear incentive, clear value proposition. Yeah, the only thing I'd probably add is a little bit of a first-person voice. I don't know. I'm nitpicking, though. Okay, cool. So if we, if we go into check out his welcome email, I'm going to admin into his account. Cool. And he's, he has the welcome email going. Awesome. Hey there, thanks for requesting. So you can look forward to getting your... Does anyone have any opinions in the uh, in chat about all this? If you have, I want to do like a group <laughs> feedback session here. Feel free to throw in your opinion. I, I think this is fine. Um, you can look forward to getting your... Yeah, cool. So he's got the um, expectations for content. Obviously, he's got all these reasons to engage because he's got he he has incentives and he's got them over here to download. Please, I mean, the only other thing I guess is I might request again, like I might request a um, or I might solicit a reply, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, but but with him, like he's got incentives. They're probably gonna download these things. That's a pretty good signal to Gmail if someone's clicking, opening and clicking on your email. Yeah, but uh, the only thing I would ask, add is um, um, some sort of question to try to get a reply out of them. Is there a way to end that? Okay, cool. So let's go on to the next one. Um, J1. Hey Juan, if you're if you're in chat, by the way, let us know that you're here. Cool. Oh hey, she is here. Awesome. Um, cool. So we've talked before, uh, but it's been a minute since I've seen your setup. Put a spell on yourself. Oh, I love that. <laughs> uh, that's obviously very you. Um, get an audio clip of. Okay, so this is pretty much perfect, I think, and straight to the point. Um, um, this part's very you. Uh, very on brand. You have obviously first person voice here with a very clear incentive, and everything's pretty brief, so that's kind of cool. Like I think I have trouble get, um, writing these things and, and getting to the point. Um, yeah, I like this a lot. I might use this as an example. Okay, cool. Um, let's check out your setup. Oh, I should I should see what you put in um, in your submit message. Oh, cool. So, see what that says. Okay, perfect. This is perfect. 
Yeah, you're telling them to go to the uh, spam inbox to get all the things. This is a really good example. Um, and then here's your welcome email. Hey, Witch, thanks for signing up. Feel free to hit reply and say hello. Oh, this is, yeah, this is all good. Like, obviously, this is you. You're asking for a reply to say hello. Um, as a gift, here's the audience. Cool, you got a cool little incentive here, exclusive incentive, listening to the script. Okay, cool. Yeah, this feels exclusive too. How to use it. Oh yeah, this is this is amazing. This is amazing. This is like the perfect setup. <laughs> um, I don't have anything else to say. Oh, it's a, maybe I might add a picture of yourself, but whatever. I mean, if you're not gonna add a picture, I, I like the the um, you know the the plain text. It feels real. It feels like it's coming from your Gmail, um, and that it feels it feels more like a one-on-one -on -one sort of interaction. Uh, yeah, I might have to use this as the perfect example in the next webinar or something like that. Cool. Anyone else have any opinions? Okay, let's move on then. This is um, for Julie. Check her out. Okay, by the way, is Julie... Is it Julie? Is Julie here? And um, anyways, if she's not, um, you can watch this later. Well, we talked about this, but this is the default. <laughs> um, uh, Beacon's uh, sign up block. Um, so obviously, I edit all this up. <laughs> um, you know, to include uh, all the reason, all the good reasons to join. Check out her welcome email if she has one set up. She does have a, well, let me check out this form. All right, so everything here is default in terms of the sign up form. Um, yeah, again, I would, I would um, change everything about that. <laughs> and then she does have a good welcome email, though, I think. Never mind, this is our default welcome email. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, this is just a case of, you know, she needs to go in and, and you know, put her own stamp on there. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, I think, I guess this is an example of what uh, the Beacon's default looks like. Um, so it's good you have it going, but um, I'll put some time into personalizing that. Austin Hines, is Austin Hines here? Well, let's check him out anyways. Okay, so oh, I remember checking this out before. I think Austin's actually a fairly large creator. Oh yeah, wow, 6.1 million, 6.5 million followers. Um, we talked about this earlier. I don't love, I mean, I kind of hate, honestly, <laughs> um, this incentive, want a free $50 giveaway. You probably will get a lot of signups. Um, but again, this is, um, you're gonna get a lot of people who uh, probably don't care about you. So this is one of those examples of like, it's not, this is not an incentive that filters out for the people that you want. Um, so I'm gonna guess, let's see. Got your, oh, that's not bad, success message here. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't want the incentive, but you did go and make sure people go check their email, probably because he wants to get someone to do something. I don't know. You're in. Thanks for chat. Okay, thanks for joining Saucy Yang. You can join my giant group chat with. Okay, uh, invite to the Discord. That's not a bad call to action, I think. So I do giveaways. So, all right, I probably just need to know more about like what his businesses um but um if you guys do have discord like this is this is probably a good place to a welcome email is a good place to uh, let people know because you know again like your subscribers are probably uh the type who might be interested in joining a discord and it's a deep action if you um like selling something that if you're going to do you should get that in your if it's important to you you should get that in your welcome email um so i don't hate the rest of the setup i just hate his incentive <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, we do have a couple questions. Yeah. 
that I've been collecting. So one that came up twice is where on the beacons page would you recommend putting the email feature at the top, um, at the bottom? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think that depends on on you know what's most important to you at any, any given time. But if it was me and I'm biased, I'd put it pretty close to the top. Um, I'd pretty I'd like if not the top one, then um, uh, then definitely the second to top one, right? Um, and the reason, and and that again, that's if you um, um, if that's if you value email marketing, right? If you don't, and you kind of passively want to get it, you don't really know what you're doing or know what you want to do with the emails, then yeah, then maybe then I deprioritize it. But if you want to be serious about collecting emails, um, I'd put it pretty close to the top of your Beacons profile because again, um, the type of person that goes to your Beacons or your site are probably folks who want to learn more about you. And um, one of the most valuable things you can do is to capture that person and to own them, right? And to to be able to uh, have a relationship with them outside of the social platforms. Um, and that's why I would probably make that like one of my top like objectives if I'm doing um, a beacon. It's like obviously if you're selling something, then you want to put that up there too. Uh, that's probably even more important. But um, but short of that, then um, then I'm probably trying to capture an email uh, for the type of person who goes to my beacons. Cool. Um, and the eternal question, uh, mm. if you are trying to get people to take an action from your welcome email, how many steps is too many? Uh, how many things can you drive somebody towards or ask towards? Is more better? Is fewer better? Uh, is, do you think they're referring to like uh, follow-up emails or? I think like the first one that we looked at, there were a bunch of links that people could click on to download stuff or um, the call to action that we were just seeing here, like go to my Discord server if it was like join yeah. my Discord or view me on TikTok or whatever, you know, do you want to focus on a single call to action? Yeah, I yeah, personally, um, um, I would try to get it as lean as possible. Um, I think we have some research in 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 internally um, where if you have more than the X amount of links, uh, for example, then they're less likely to click on any of them. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would, I personally would probably go with two to three call to actions max, right? And I'd really try to get that down to one or two or like one or two main ones and then maybe some supplemental ones. But, um, but yeah, that does matter. Like uh, you don't want to, um, um, what is it called analysis by paralysis something like that if you give too many options um oftentimes you're scaring people away and they're not gonna do any of them so uh i think think about the way i would think about it is with welcome emails um i would go for those deep actions right like those things that you um, um feel like is sort of a big ask well these are the five folks that you ask that right like if it's a purchase or joining your discord or um, getting a reply or whatever, like um, th these are the kinds of things that, um, um, you know, maybe you would feel less comfortable asking a casual fan, uh, but uh, the diehards are coming for your welcome email, are coming through your welcome email. So ask the thing that's really valuable for you. Awesome. Uh, last cool. question that's up for now. We've pretty much addressed this in the chat, I think, but what about including video content in the welcome email? <laughs> Uh, we do have the video blocks um, that you can add, and we sort of anecdotally see that perform well for us. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, great idea. Yeah, the, the video can work. Like, I, I think uh, something that I've seen that's pretty cool is um, they'll use like a like an unlisted video as an incentive, right? Like, if uh, like join my email group or join my newsletter, and you'll get. Um, um, this exclusive piece of content, right? That's essentially like an unlisted YouTube video that's uh, linked through the welcome email. Or um, um, another cool thing I'll see is um, uh, creators will, yeah, essentially make another private vi video, but like welcoming them to like the newsletter and describing if they got a lot of cool things going on in the newsletter, like in video kind of like explaining all those things as opposed to just text. Um, all those things can work. Um, and then lastly, like, if you're a, 
if you're mainly a video content creator and you have like one video that you in particular you want to um um i guess you know get sh more views and more shares on then then i guess you could ask for that but i don't know in general like I wouldn't necessarily use welcome emails to like up your social numbers. Um, I don't think that should be the objective. Like um, use social to get social numbers, right? Like to get those big top line vanity numbers. Welcome email is mu much more, I think about like, you should focus on those deep asks from uh, your best fans. Um, your best fans aren't gonna necessarily get you uh, viral on TikTok, but they're probably more likely to uh, buy something from you or download that thing or, you know, share, share your playlist. I don't know, whatever it is, it's like, um, I wouldn't necessarily use a welcome email for um, views, view count, that kind of stuff. But again, yeah, if it's like exclusive stuff, um, if it's like a kind of like a, a private sort of uh, welcome video or any other kind of exclusive content, that stuff's cool. Like that stuff's like something that's actually kind of fun for the, for the uh, subscriber. Um, but yeah, again, I wouldn't necessarily share a video to, um, yeah, to, to work the algorithms or anything like that. Cool, should we, should we do one more or should we go through questions? I think we're caught up on questions for right now. So yeah, let's do another okay. one. There's one uh, profile I know right off the top that I think is um, really good. Her name, she, 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 her sign up block was the one we looked at earlier in the slides. Um, so she's a musician in the Bay Area, also a Google engineer. <laughs> um, but yeah, again, we saw her um, sign up form earlier. Um, I really like I really like this kind of uh, um, sign up form or, or uh, prompt uh, from from a musician because um, I think with the musician, I think like. Uh, you know, they're not necessarily like going to be able to write you like a, a, a guide on some like, you know, topic or whatever and make that like a PDF download per se. Uh, but their best fans want like um, um, the feeling of access, I would say, right? Like uh, musicians and entertainers are sort of like superstars in, the, in a kind of way to their fans. Um, and I just like the I just like how she used the word secret, right? Um, secret concert, secret content, that kind of stuff heads up on 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 um you know the kinds of like access products that i think uh uh fans and musicians and entertainers are into so again she didn't have like this like incentive you can download as a file or anything like that which which is super concrete and like instant gratification and if you don't have that then um i think you kind of like um just try to figure out like what's what is it that your best fans want from you right even if it's some sort of like kind of an abstract concept i guess Anyway, so that's her, that's her on the front end in terms of the email sign up. I'm gonna check her. Uh, let's see, what does this say? Post to work, I'll get a working way to start. So to check your email, awesome. That's the most important part. If I'm lost in spam, be sure to find me. Does it see, okay, perfect. Yeah, pretty much perfect in terms of like the after, um, after submit call to action. Let's check out our welcome email. Oh yeah, that's right. I did see this before. Um, there's her face. Kind of a really long picture. I don't want to crop that. But otherwise, um, um, it's a good picture. You're here on US Cloud. Yeah, so I mean, as you can tell, it's got all the elements. Reply to this email, tell me your favorite song. I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, this is perfect. Um, cool, yeah. Other than that, I think we did have some, I mean, unless, does anyone have like a setup in chat? If you have a, that that you want us to take a look at, if so, leave it in chat. Um, otherwise, we did have some questions from, um, from, the, uh, from, from the registration form. The, uh, that we can get through. You, are you good with that, Isabel? Should we, you think we should get to these questions in the last 10 minutes? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that's a great thing to do, address those. I would. I think we have somebody also who said, are you open to looking at my Beacons page? 
Um, so if you yeah. are if you are here and present in the chat and you want Brian to look at your beacons page, um, drop us a link in the chat to your page. Yeah, or again, if if um, um, if we don't get it right now in the webinar, I'm Brian at beacons.ai, B-R-Y-A-N. Uh, we, we'll, we'll follow up with all this in the follow-up email. Um, cool. So one of the questions, how can I create from Gloria H, Gloria H, how can I create email interest list and email for one group and an email for a different group? Okay, so that's basically doing like a version of, of like audience segments um, uh, or like a public-facing sort of audience segments. We, we don't have that functionality at this exact moment right now in Beacon's email uh, marketing. We are in beta, um, but we will soon. So, um, so yeah, there is a way to do that. Um, some platforms can do it, some, some can't. Um, ours can't right now. Uh, it will in a matter of probably weeks or months. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's called different things in different email platforms, groups, segments tags, whatever. Um, but, uh, but you can definitely do that. And uh, you'll be able to do that pretty soon with um, Beacon's email. This is not one, this is one of those things like I wouldn't necessarily overthink like if you're a single creator, um, it's hard just to do one newsletter. So I would try to simplify things. But if you have to split them off, um, I would, I would probably do that after getting started in case you haven't already started. Cool. So Julie, Julie M, how to integrate my email subscribers into my new digital download ebook? Um, I'm guessing what that meant was uh, how to sell my digital download ebook to my subscribers. And if that's the question, well, email is like the perfect thing to sell a digital download ebook because um, a you can like take a little piece of your ebook and make it an incentive, right? Like the first. Uh, I don't know, five pages um, or a summary of this book as a uh, welcome email um, incentive or download. Um, and then, of course, like if they want more, then it's both an incentive and like a, um, um, like a sales like tool, right? <laughs> like, um, it, it, yeah, like then, then you have a product to sell them. And, and, and the cool thing is like with ebooks, there's like you already wrote all this stuff, right, uh, in, in theory. Um, so you can like keep emailing these folks right in the sequence, um, past the welcome email, um, um, with, with more like, you know, teasing of your content basically. Um, so, and yeah, and that's, and that's like something that's just inherently valuable to the subscriber, right? Like they, uh, probably are interested in your ebook or your topic because you are you and you wrote that thing. Um, and, um, and if it's an ebook that you wrote, then there's probably all types of useful things in there that um, you can sort of parse out and tease through an email email workflow. Yeah, so that's a perfect thing to uh, sell. And if you have, if you're making, if you're thinking about putting out an ebook and selling it, or if you're thinking about selling anything at all in the future, that's your own product. Uh, you want to start getting those emails now. Start building those emails now, uh, because once you get to launch, you're not gonna, you, you're gonna want to have your like emails ready to go. Uh, by the time you're launching whatever product that you're thinking of doing. Cool. Uh, Saranya, any advice for beginners? I think oh, like- Sorry, Brian, hold on. Quick. Oh, yeah. Julie popped up to clarify. She meant to add the email subscribe button within her ebook. Oh, huh. Uh, I, I don't, I had never even thought of that. <laughs> um, yeah, why not? Like, you know, you see like uh, authors these days like create websites uh, and um, or blog blog sites and they'll tell them in like a physical book, hey, go to this website, right? Which always makes me think like what happens like, you know, 20 years from now when they stop writing in that blog. But anyways, yeah, I mean, um, um, yeah, why not? Like someone who buys your book like um, um, and who found like who someone who found your book and they read it and if they get to the end. Yeah, they pro you probably do want, if they, you haven't already captured them in email, you probably do want to have that relationship with them so you can sell that second book to them. Cool, so yeah, any advice for beginners? I think set up a welcome email, that's the main thing. Uh, get that going. Um, how important is the welcome email? What CTA should be included? How long or short should it be? Uh, I think, we. I mean, that was mostly the subject of the slide, so. Um, we can probably skip that that question. Uh, yeah, I think those are 
those are all the questions I have. We have like five minutes left. Um, we got to get kicked we off. We got somebody five drop in. We got to drop in from Stella in the chat. You see her link to her page. Okay, cool. Let's let's do this real quick. What's up, Stella? I've, I've talked to Stella before on the phone. Um, well, yeah, so Stella runs uh, the uh, the Alana project, which is um, something having to do with Web3 and, and art, um, uh, which I'm actually into. But once, OK, so let, let's just check out the, the, uh, the email sign up form. Want to be in the known? So this is not bad in the sense of like you already have context up here, right? Of what Alana is, and um, and so maybe you need less context down here. But having said that, I would still put more context down here. I would especially put like what they can, uh, some more like specific things they can expect to uh, get from joining the newsletter, right? Um, I mean, I don't hate like 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 having like um, something that's a little bit more mysterious in the right situations. I think it's kind of hard to pull off, um, um, especially if you're not already kind of famous or have like a big following uh, of people who kind of know what you're about. Um, but if 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 you aren't that, then I would be a little bit more explicit about like what value the subscriber is going to get out of your newsletter. Cool. So that's that. But at least it's not default. So that's good. Um, and yeah, let's check out the final block on the back end. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. This is, thanks for signing up. Thanks. Yep, perfect. Perfect. Straight into the point. Go check your spam email. And then lastly, um, have a welcome email. Here's, you made it. Okay, that's good. That's great. Here's some candy for you. I like that. Let's just get you started with earning some up. Oh, cool. That, see, there is like a real like kind of specific value here. I would I would probably at least tease a little bit of that in the sign up block. Um, let's see, what does this go to? Oh, I can't click into that. Uh, the only the thing that I would the only thing I would add here you may. There's a lot of good things here, like um, you made it, and um, um, I don't know, you're offering some sort of incentive here. Let's see. I would, I would, I would do some sort of call to action. Um, the obvious one, I guess, is reply. Uh, but if not that, then some reason to click on something on here, right? Yeah, I would include some sort of specific call to action. Does anyone else have opinions on this? On what um on what Stella should do here? Yeah, if you have some advice for Stella, feel free to drop that in the chat. Um, as we are down to about our final like two minutes here, um, I did just want to say thank you so much to everybody who came and engaged with us throughout. You were an incredible audience. Um, and there was a question that was a great question, which I love, which was, when is your next webinar and what is the subject? I want to see more of you. Um, so <laughs> this was actually our first like product style webinar that we've done. Um, most of our events are hosted through the community. So I dropped some instructions in the chat here for how to join the community so that you can make sure to always have priority access um, to exclusive events and first access to more product style webinars. Um, if we can rope Brian into doing that some more in the future. And um, I also dropped a link to a community event that I'm hosting tomorrow, um, which is a pricing workshop. So go sign up for that if you would like to do that as well. Yeah, and it, uh, like Isabel mentioned, um, this 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 is sort of a first attempt at like a like a bigger webinar. Um, so we're gonna have to go back and evaluate whether it's worth the effort. But uh, I thought it was a lot of fun. I do want to thank you guys for coming because um, that makes it more likely that we're gonna do more of these in the future. Uh, we are gonna send out an email, um, and this can be available on this link in terms of the recording, um, and um, probably gonna put it up on YouTube. There is a blog post associated with this, by the way, which I'll send you guys. Like all the stuff that I talked about is written out on a blog post. 
Uh, I'll send all that stuff to you guys. Um, and if you if you guys could if you guys promote this or know anyone who wants to see this kind of stuff, and we see like the recorded numbers are pretty good, then that's pro that probably means we're more likely to do another one. Like I do want to do one on like how do you ideas for what kind of content to send and um, and all that kind of stuff once you do have a good list going. Uh, but yeah, it's going to depend on whether it's. <laughs> whether what whether enough of you guys want to see this stuff so yeah i i think the people have spoken brian they are <laughs> telling us in the chat that they want more of this uh so we are gonna awesome. have to give the people what they want cool well um i think we're about to get kicked off by crowdcast but yeah thanks everyone for showing up <laughs> yeah absolutely this was wonderful um and you guys all have Brian's email, feel free to reach out to him um, and we'll be following up with information from today so that you guys have access to all of this stuff in the future. Sweet. Thanks. Bye. Bye everyone. <laughs>